Hello, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer on Thursday the 24th of June. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today and I trust that wherever you are, around the country, around the county, around the town of Northampton, you're well. Shall we bow our heads together now as we come into the presence of God and this morning remember that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, he's with us. Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it, let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Thanks be to God for his word. Now let's pray together. For those who have watched over me, for those that have protected me, for those that have shielded me, thanks be to the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. For the roof that shades me from the sun, for the walls that shield me from, shield me from the storm, for the bed that warms me in the night, thanks be to the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. To the one who keeps me from evil, to the one who preserves my life, to the one who watches over my coming and going. Thanks be to the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. O oh God, you loved the world so much that you sent your own son, Jesus Christ, to live and die among us in order that we might have life. Forgive us for keeping that abundant life to ourselves for jealously hoarding your generous gifts, for choosing self-interest over compassion and justice. Teach us what it means to live as children of the light, generously sharing your abundance with our brothers and sisters in need. So may Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives, bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today as we continue to read through the book of the Acts of the Apostles we are in chapter 5 and begin to read today at the 12th verse. Now many signs and wonders were done among the people through the Apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Yet more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, great numbers of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by. A great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. Then the high priest took action. He and all who were with him, that is the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, Go! Stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. When they had heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak, 
and went on with their teaching. When the high priests and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body of the elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were perplexed about them, wondering what might be going on. Then someone arrived and announced, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the temple police and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. Thanks be to God for his word. So this passage begins by recording that many signs and wonders were being done by the apostles. And in this uh, summary passage here, in the first part of what we read together, um, there's healing taking place. But Luke, the writer, editor, however you want to describe him, of the Goss of the Acts of the Apostles, is focusing on the fact that this healing comes through the apostles. It's not theirs. The gift is not theirs. The ministry is not theirs. It's God's. Healing comes from God. But the people, and many of them perhaps who were attracted by what they saw as supernatural works, uh, reacted in ways which perhaps were not unexpected. They took their sick, they took those who were um, tormented by unclean spirits. You may say they were suffering either with mental disorders, mental illnesses, depression, whatever. They believed, as many did at this time, that if there was a holy man or a righteous man, or some kind of faith healer, then even the shadow of that person, or the influence of that person, could bring about an increase in their condition. So we don't know exactly what they were doing, and whether this was people who had faith or were just intrigued, but what we do know is that it says they were cured. Now, there's a difference between cure and healing, isn't there? But certainly in, in some of these situations, however we may describe it, God's power fell upon uh, the people who were in need. And the Lord healed through Peter. So the Lord heals and the Lord delivers because we go on then as a result of the uh, popularity of Peter and the apostles. They're thrown into prison. And there are a number of miraculous releases throughout the book of Acts, three in fact. But we read in verses 19 and 20 that the angel of the Lord opened uh, the prison doors and set them free. And so these angelic messengers, those who are sent from God with tasks to do, release the apostles from prison. And this is a direction. So not only are they set free um, physically, but they are given, again, fresh instruction, fresh confidence, perhaps, and fresh power to go stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. What life? The life, the with God life. This is the power of God to change people, not just physically, but spiritually, to set people free. And so they were to go into the busiest places, right in the centre of the temple, and to go on with their teaching. And God has set them free for a task. And do you know what? All of us who have come to saving faith in Christ have in a, sen have in a sense been set free set free from the power and the penalty and the guilt of sin, and set free to serve God as he gifts us, as he enables us. What a privilege is it is to do whatever we can to assist in the ministry uh, that God prepares in advance for us to do. So, again, at the heart of this passage, as we're going to find... It's not only the acts of the apostles, but the direction of the Lord, 
that brings people to encounter life and to encounter him. And of course that happens when we introduce people to Jesus. May he help us do that today. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together for ourselves and for our world, and for those we know and love. Firstly, today we continue to pray for our National Health Service, for all who work with it, work within it, and for other key workers. So we remember today that our God is the great healer. We voice our gratitude for those who further that healing ministry through the NHS. And we pray that God would prosper the work of their hands and that they would all be encouraged in their continued work of sacrifice and care among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of BMS World Mission in Kathmandu and in the International Study Centre where teachers are trained to go back out into Nepal. We ask God that this programme of improvement would help support the needs both physically, academically and emotionally, of all the children who may be reached as a consequence of these teachers returning to different parts of the country. Lord, keep them safe. And may they go out not only with greater tools for teaching, but greater spiritual tools for living in the power of God's Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians in Central Asia, particularly in places where children are unable to be looked after in their homes because of the effect of COVID and so many are being sent to orphanages to at least provide them with food and shelter. We thank God for the work of Open Doors who are helping reunite families, sharing not only food and water and clothing, but also the gospel. And we thank God for the changed lives, and we pray that in different parts of Central Asia, uh, that communities will be changed by the power of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray for ourselves and for those we know and love in the moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. So may you trust in God's promises to his people, peace, security, blessing, even when they are difficult to believe. May you know that God's news is good news, nourishing, true, even when people tell you it's not. And when you encounter doubt, may you strengthen your belief, guiding you in his perfect wisdom and counsel. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you 
with those whom you love and with God's people everywhere, today and forevermore. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe. And until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless you.